sweet Thames, run softly. Ted Hunt, an ex lighterman and barge master to Her Majesty the Queen, is skilled in the tides and currents of old Father Thames. I was bound apprentice to my father as a waterman and lighterman. And I should tell you that the difference is this. A waterman is a man who is allowed to carry uh, fair-paying passengers on the River Thames, whereas a lighterman is a man who carries cargo on the River Thames. Centuries gone by, we know there were thousands and thousands of watermen who were the taxi drivers of, of that, that era. Anyone who wanted to travel at all through London travelled by water. I taught many apprentices how to do this, hundreds of them, have taken them for their first drive, as we call it. Now, the object isn't that they should uh, acquire the skill of rowing barges, because that's not required these days. But what experience they have rowing barges is this. The tide very often runs about six times as fast as you can row. And so it's the finest way of learning just how the tide sets on this river. Because if you make an error of judgment, you pay for it with aching arms. And this is how apprentices today acquire some of the skill that helps them to take passenger boats away from all these London piers. And for most of them, this was their first experience of navigating under oars, a barge like this, 50-ton barge, first-class way of giving them confidence. What apprentices have to discover very early in their career is the effect of wind on a vessel. Now, the effect of wind on a barge like this, no engines, no sails, just muscle power, is most noticeable. If you underestimate it at all, then you come unstuck. The general principle is this. The effect of wind on a barge is to keep it broadside onto the wind. Now here we are coming down to London Bridge. The wind is keeping the barge broadside on. I can stop rowing. The wind's doing it all for me. I'm slowly trading ahead away from London Bridge abutment, working my way to the centre of the arch, and I hope coming clear of Belfast, which today has another vessel moored alongside to make the gap a little bit narrower than usual. Now, because the wind is blowing hard up the reach, I'll have a job to turn around. I'll get her so far, and the wind will be trying to, to stop me. Somehow or other, I've got to turn this barge around so that she faces the south shore. At the moment, she's facing the north. There's the monument behind us. Because if I don't, I know that the tide set at Tower Bridge is very hard onto the North Shore. And I'm going to finish up, what, in the saloon of the Tower Hotel. So when I feel that I've traded ahead enough, then I'll start thinking about turning around. Winding her, as we say. All on her own, she'll want to go towards the South Shore. There have been many changes since I came afloat in 1935. In those days, and in the four or five years leading up to the war, uh, the Pool of London was crammed with ships. Coastwise, the walls were crammed, lots of ships off afloat with the boys, uh, discharging and loading cargoes with their own derricks, and all surrounded with barges. Half a dozen docks from London down to Tilbury, crammed with ships and barges, all discharging their cargo. All disappeared. I feel very sad about the decline in river traffic. Uh, I've worked with some very, very skilled men, highly skilled, uh, men who have skill which I'll, I'll never have. And to see the way that they could perform with craft, tugs and barges, handling thousands of tons on occasions, uh, something to be uh, wondered at and appreciated and enjoyed. It's gone. Those skills are gone. When I worked as a boat boy in 1935, 
I soon became aware that there were highly respected river men who were watermen to His Majesty the King. And I never dreamed that, what, 45 years later, I would be barge master to Her Majesty the Queen.